Good evening, church. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Colin, the pulpit minister here at Central Church of Christ. And this is Dan Spaeth. He's one of our elders. And here at Central Church of Christ, it's our mission to be God's heart and hands in this community and beyond. If you'd like to learn more about what that means, I want to encourage you to head over to our website at www.churchvictoria.com. This is our Wednesday evening conversation through the law and the prophets where we open up the Old Testament, we move through the narrative and the text, and we see how it impacts us today as the church and how it how that text connects to Jesus. Um, if you're listening to this on the Heart and Heads podcast, I want to thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have the bell turned on so you get notified every time we upload a video. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to like and share. That really helps us out. And make sure to comment down below. Um, if this ministry has blessed you or you'd like to partner with us in this ministry, I want, I want to encourage you to head over to that website. At the top of the page, we have a donate button that uh, take, will take you to PayPal, and you can partner with us as we seek to teach and preach the gospel. Uh, we're going to pray and get into the lesson. Again, church, thank you so much for joining us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have once again to study your word. We, we thank you for the power of it. We thank you for the majesty of it. And we thank you, Father, for the truth of it. And when there's so much negativity and there's so much stuff that's not true out in the world today, one thing we can, we can hang ourselves on, hang our hats on, is that this word is true. And we thank you for that, Father. Help us to, to navigate through it, to present it in a way that, that our, our audience can, can understand and, and, and apply it. And we thank you again for it. Thank you for your Son. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. And thank you, Father, for the, the plan of salvation that you instituted for the very beginning. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are in Numbers chapter 13. They have arrived. Mm -hmm. They have arrived at the land. So now everything's going to go way better. And no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, and, and this is the land that God promised them, promised to Abraham. It's the land that he promised them when he took them out of Egypt. If you go back and look at Exodus 3, it says, I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, that's where I'm taking you. And you would think they would be, you know, if you go on a trip, Cole, Mm -hmm. You just told me you go you went you go to Coletto Reservoir to take your kids. It's really cheap to go there. It's a very cheap for, for and when you have when you have when you're taking a car and you've got many people as you got, that's really you know it's not as cheap for me in Georgia to go as it is for you and your family to go because you got fourteen hundred kids, man. Yeah. Yep. You know, so you got a, a numerous people. But when you go, are you are your kids in high anticipation? Do they know where you're going? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Do they know where you're going? Yeah, we tell them. We tell them, you know, a couple of days before, so they're aware. Do they do they anticipate like that when they don't know when they've never been there before? Yeah, they they get real. Uh, no, if they don't know we're going, if they know we're going somewhere but don't know where we're, we're going, they get real antsy. They want to know. They okay. want to know where we're going. Well, what if you tell them? What do you say? Yeah, we're going. We're going to go over here. You know, let's say you, you're taking them to Splashway in, in Sheridan. Oh my gosh, they would they would make up stories like like Gabriel would be like, oh I've been there before. Boy's never been anywhere before, but <laughs> he'd be like, oh I've been there before, and it's like this. Like so, they'll come up with stories. They'll be so excited about going. They'll in their imaginations, they'll start coming up with stories about somewhere they've never been. What about the first time they went and um, they didn't know what it was like? They've well, never been there before. They, they, we've, we've never been to Splashway. Okay, you've never but been. We've never been to Splashway. It is not $17 car. No, no, it is not. It no, is, it is. It's it, very expensive. It costs your family $150 to go. Well, and, and on top of that, we can't go when we want to. So we won't, we don't like going and being out on the water and stuff like that after 11, 30, 12. We're really not big fans of that. Once, once We all burn. We're all yeah, really I understand. pale. I, well, so, uh, but, so we've never been, but like when we went, the first time we went to Coletto, um, you know, they did that. We told them, I, I don't think we actually told them where we were going. I think we kept it from them. And then we just showed up and they were so excited when they saw the lake, when they saw the trees, when they saw. And so now it's like a big deal when, yeah. we, when we tell well, them. Well, with these people, God told them. These are like your little mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. And God told them, I'm taking you to a new land. Yeah. I'm, you're going to leave this place because this place, you know, when Gabriel and, 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 he, and he lived with y'all, mm -hmm. he has memories of where he came from. Yeah. It is so night and day different from where he came from to where he is now. Oh, yeah. 100%. That he has to have memories of that. Mm -hmm. You know, they try to make excuses for the place they left over and over and over. Well, it wasn't really that bad. At least we had meat to eat. Or it really wasn't that bad. We did, At least we had water to drink whenever we wanted it. You know, God's told him, I'm going to take you to a new land. 
And, I, and I'm going to take you to a land, not only just any old land, but this land is going to be unbelievable. Yeah. You can tell your kids, we're going to go to the lake. Okay. They don't have any idea what that means. But it's going to be unbelievable. A lake is, is a body of water, and you're going to get to swim in it. And, and there's going to be fish, and there's going to be a beach. You can, you know, it's going to be awesome. Until they get there and can look at it and say, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was right. Makes you, it helps you believe the next time Daddy tells you something. It does. Right? So they, they're going to get here, and all of that they're going to forget. <laughs> they're going to forget all of it and act like a bunch of morons again. Well, and I, my, in my opinion, in this is just that th this has been consistent from the get go. Mm -hmm. They are, yeah, they idiots. They, they, I, I, in my, and just looking at the text, my perspective on it is this: they are unable to come to grips. They are unable to come to grasp this God. Um, I think the event at Sinai where they saw the fire, where they, where they saw God intrude into reality. Um, I think it was too much. And I think it, it, they were just never going to be able, I mean, the immediate reaction is as soon as Moses is gone, Hey, Aaron, make us a golden calf. They're just unable to really grab onto, you know, um, they're unable to reconcile what gods have always been, which gods for them have always been. And in Egypt and in other ancient cultures, gods were there to be manipulated, to give you what you want. And that's the whole goal. And this is still common today. This is what rich witchcraft is. This is what sorcery is. This is what all those things are today. Is there ways to manipulate these powers to give me what I want? They are unable to reconcile a holy God with their selfish interest. And and they just can't, they just won't, they won't do it. They won't do it. That's why, and, and Lee, I want you to pull up Ezekiel 36. Because especially since we're, we're coming in to view this rebellion, exactly what you said. What is necessary, right? The whole, the whole tension in the text is god wants a people who will choose him right that's really what he wants mm -hmm. he wants somebody who will say i'm going to give myself up for you just like god gives himself up for us but what we find is people they're not doing that god has led them up by the hand he, he <laughs> did done all the things that you're talking about and their their and, response is really sad made promises to them that how can they negate the promise god's made promises to us okay Yes. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. I believe him. Right. I believe him. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect all the time, but I believe him. I'm not I'm not going to go back. I want to set myself up with a, with a, with a, a buffer and a cushion around me of people and ideas and that is going to help to sustain me because, but, because I know where I came from. You're right. But what makes the difference for you and for them is vast. They had law. Yeah. It wasn't enough. Yeah. It wasn't enough yeah. to know what the difference between right and wrong is. And I want to read this out of Ezekiel. This is talking about the new covenant. This is talking, mm -hmm. this is way down the road. We'll eventually, Lord willing, get here. But way down the road, and this this is what God is going to say to him. Are you, are you in 36, Lee? 36. This is 36, starting, starting, I'm going to start it in 25, okay? In 20, verse 24. 36, 24, Ezekiel 36, 24, he says, I'm going to take you, I'm going to bring you back out of the nations, right? So this is, they are going into exile. So this is way after they've already gotten the land. They've yeah. been living in the land. Yeah, they've rebelled is, against God yeah. again, and they're going to exile. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, if you didn't know, that's how this story ends. But, or at least this, how that's a portion of it ends. But in verse 25, he says this. After I bring you back from the land, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Because what we're going to see is the problem with these people is not knowledge of good and evil. The problem with this people is they have a heart inclined to themselves. Yeah. So God's saying the day is going to come that I'm going to clean you. I'm going to clean you all up. Then I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to take out your heart of stone. Right? It says that next. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And then, so I'm going to give you a new spirit, give you a new heart. But then on top of that, I'm going to put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. And he's talking about the church here. Yeah. And this is what yeah. we have in the church. Guys, if you're out there and you're struggling and you're sucking wind, <laughs> trying to follow God, and you're like, I don't understand. I know I know what's right. I know what's wrong. Or I've you're read being the Bible. told things that don't make sense to you. Or Sorry? you're being told things, yeah. spiritual things that are, are, and all you feel like is a robot going through motions. You really got to stop and ask yourself, have I obeyed the gospel? Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. I, I think that's that's so big because here's the thing. I can tell you law all day long. I can tell you right and wrong. I can tell you what it is and what we see over and over again. This is Acts chapter 15 with Peter where he says, hey, you know, we weren't able to bear this law. We weren't able to do it. Yeah. So why are we going to bind it on the Gentiles? Yeah. God provides in his new covenant the means and the mode by which we obey the gospel and then remain faithful. Yeah. He enables it. It's not because, look, we're not good people. No. And, you know? he, and, he, <laughs> and, he, and he and his and his foresight was this is what I'm gonna do from the very beginning. Yes, this is where he's yeah. he's moving towards what's going on with I mean, Paul will say in Acts chapter 10 specifically about this rebellion that this this happened for the church's understanding. This happened for our benefit, mm-hmm. so that we could learn by what they went through. Mm-hmm. So it's there for us. It's meant to teach us. And what's it, what is it meant to teach us? That no amount of simple law, no amount of this is right and this is wrong, do this, is gonna ever work. And this is not just relegated to the Israelite nation. This is happening in our culture today. There, there are churches out there that profet, that promote and profess being obedient to law. Yes, of one kind or another, and instead of instead of celebrating a transformed life with the with an indwelling Holy Spirit. Yeah. Well, yielding yourself up to God and living that out. Yeah. That's that's essentially what living, it is. Living out. You know, he said, tells Tim, Paul tells Timothy in, in Second mm-hmm. Timothy, uh, he says, he said, I saved, I called you and saved you for a holy life. That's right. Uh, that's a separated life, a life separated from the world. That's what he's called us to. That's right. And he's, and he's made provisions. Ezekiel tells us he's made provisions for that. I'm going to take out your heart of stone. That's right. When we repent, that's what he's doing. When we're when we're converted, when that conversion happens, and we're baptized into Christ, and we're and we're rising up to walk in unity, He's removing the heart of stone, yeah. putting in a heart of flesh, and then indwelling us, so that we can stay faithful. And I would challenge you: go through the text in the New Testament. You know, I talked about obeying the gospel. Go 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 through the text in the New Testament and see what is connected to baptism. Look at that Ezekiel 36 passage. It's Ezekiel 36, starting in 24. Mm -hmm. Read what God is going to do, and then go in the New Testament and look at what this rite of baptism is really about. Mm -hmm. And I would challenge you to do that because, you know, there's a lot of bad teaching on baptism out there. There's a lot of teaching that says it's not important. It doesn't matter. I I beg to differ. God, that's not what God says about it. No, that's not what he says. You know, at, at the very least, I think we could all agree that it's a command. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Christ commands people to be baptized. Well, that's, that's because it's there's Mark something 16, there. Mark 16, he does the same thing. So I, I would challenge you, if you're struggling with this, we're going to go through this law. And look, the Israelites have been told. And maybe you're in the same boat. Maybe you've been told right and wrong. But maybe you struggle like they struggle. And the question is why? I know I sat in a church for a year and a half wondering that. Yeah. Wondering why I couldn't be like Jesus. What was wrong? I believed in him, so what was the issue? Mm -hmm. And I I think sometimes we have to ask ourselves, have we really obeyed? Mm -hmm. Have we really obeyed the gospel? So, but let's get into it. Let's look at Numbers 13, you know, and let's see what happens, right? So the Lord said to Moses, this is Numbers 13, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So these aren't, this isn't the rabble, no, right? No. You know, no, this, no, we've seen them. No, one's been causing the problem. Ah, uh-uh, no, no. He says, the leaders. Oh, okay. So we're going to send some of the leaders of these tribes, some of the guys who've been in the upper echelons who've seen things, right? They've all seen things, but you know, when you're, when you're in leadership, sometimes you're a part of discussions, you're a part of things, and right? You, and you have a, have a sense about you. If you're in leadership, you have a sense about, and leaders will rise to the surface. Sure. They, they not just, they not, you just don't go pick somebody sitting on the street corner. I mean, they, these guys rise to the surface. I mean, you 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 start to see leadership pretty. You can see it in the playground in kindergarten. Sure. Who's 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 destined? My mother told me a long time ago, and I never saw it. My mother told me a long time. Many people that that maybe watch this have heard me say this: that one day you're going to lead people. And I said, Pff. yeah. You know, I wasn't I wasn't the the top notch guy in high school or nothing like that. He said you're going to lead people. I don't know what she saw. She saw something. Well, leadership rises up, and these people have risen up to the, right. to the point of that. So. And so these are their names, and so we go through all of the names yeah. of, of all of the, the various tribes. And, you know, that one, you see all of these people represented from these tribes. So these are the names of the men Moses sent to explore the land. We're not going to read all the names. <clears throat> Moses gave Hosea, son of Nun, 
uh, the name of Joshua. So he would have been from the tribe of Ephraim. Yeah. So he's from the tribe of Ephraim. And there's a really interesting study. We haven't really touched on it, but for those who are interested, go back and look at the remnant. Who is faithful from Genesis forward? Because there seems to be always a couple of tribes that are faithful, right? Joseph was faithful, right? He represents two tribes, the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Ephraim. Mm -hmm. um, you know, later we'll see in uh, in the in the Israel, in the divided kingdom period, Judah and Levite mm -hmm. were faithful. There always seems to be a remnant that is faithful. It's very interesting. I, I was talking to somebody. Benjamin. Somebody, faithful. yeah, Judah and Benjamin, right? Judah so, and Benjamin. Mm -hmm. um, so go through and read that. It's re really interesting. Uh, study and we start to see some of that here we've seen some of it before but i'm noting it here no verse 17 when moses sent them to explore canaan he said go up through the negev and go into the hill country see what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak few or many what kind of land do they live in is it good or bad what kind of towns do they live in are they unwalled or fortified how is the soil is it fertile fertile or poor are there trees in it or not do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land it was the season for uh, the first ripe grapes now i imagine when moses is doing this he's thinking shock and awe campaign i'm going to send these guys in they're going to bring back all this good news and good report we're going to gin these people up and we're going to March faithfully and confidently into the land. Nah, it didn't work that way. <laughs> Have you ever had an idea in your head and you're like, man, this is going to go great. And then and it gets blows shot up down, in your face. Or it gets shot down by the first person you talk to. When I first got here, first got here, I was like, one of the things we talk about a lot was, you know, the assembly, you know, and when does it end? When does it begin? Like, we don't actually have real hard set mm -hmm. times. And I was thinking, man, I'd like to get with the worship leaders, the guys who have been here. We're just coming back from COVID, right? And I'd like to get with them and I'd like them to come up with, hey, because they know the body, they know the congregation. So they know, you know, what we should do. And I'll just facilitate this meeting. It'll be great. <laughs> how did that go work for you yeah, well man it blew up in my face so bad and and it, look i didn't do a good job of commuting communicating that what i just said i didn't do a good job of that apparently and so what it was totally misunderstood what what we were trying to do it totally blew up in my face i thought the meeting went great and then i was informed later that everybody was upset and i was like oh goodness gracious okay <laughs> So, uh, and I don't know if it was maybe just because we we're coming back from COVID. I don't know if it was, I, I couldn't tell you. There were, there were men who were still here who, who were in that meeting. So they could tell you why, why there was uh, some confusion over it. But it was, it was so upsetting to me because it was, it, I really intended it to be a great thing, a good thing that would be encouraging and empowering and, and all these things. Because I don't want to do this. I, I don't know. I, especially when I first got here, I don't know the congregation. I don't know anything. And so I was thinking, man, putting this, giving this to them to let them decide, you know, what this or how this will work and, and the structure and all that. I bet they'll love that. Not so much. Yeah, not so much. So I, I feel for Moses. I, I feel like Moses was coming into this going, you know, hey, this is going to, this is going to be awesome. God keeps talking about how great this land is. God keeps talking about how good this land is, how it's filled. And with Moses money. don't know. You know, Moses never he's, been there. He's going, know? he's going by what God's telling him. So he's like, this will nip this rebellion in the bud real quick. We'll send all these guys out there, one from each tribe, represent. They'll go in, they'll pull the stuff out. So surely this is going to work, right? <laughs> so they went up and explored the land. This is in verse 21. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zen as far as Rehob towards Leo Hamath. And they went up through the Negev and came to Hebron, uh, where Amin, Shishai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, lived. Hebron had been built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. So some of this stuff, you know, we see these these kind of these inserts, right, into the text here, right? Hebron had been built seven mm -hmm, years before mm -hmm, Zoan in mm -hmm. Egypt. We don't really know if that was originally what was there or if maybe an editor added that in later. And so we see this throughout the text, right? Mm -hmm. These kind of like identifiers like, oh, it's over here. Um, it could go either way. We really don't know. But I just want to point that out because some people will take these edits and say, oh, see, there are these later additions to the text and it wasn't all one... That doesn't have to mean that, yeah. okay? So there's different interpretations for that. Just want to point it out. Verse 23, when they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. 
That's so. This was an extensive exploration. Yeah, month and a bit. Yeah, it's over a month. They were out there. Found all these grapes. Grapes. Found all these pomegranates. Yeah, they're gonna yeah, come back. Can you and imagine how big that cluster of grapes was? Took two men to carry it. I've seen. I've seen like in the children's Bible when they when they mm -hmm. narrate this story mm -hmm. or when they. Mm -hmm picture this story it's always like you know they're it's like weighed down like this the stick mm -hmm. is like this and the cluster of grapes is yeah. huge off of it everything that's that's the that's the whole essence of it it is it's you know, supposed to be that's what it's supposed to be communicating yeah they you know they you cut off a limb and they I mean, and they've got a cluster of grapes like this but you know for it to be i mean this was this was fertile lush very very uh uh fruitful so well, that's, very that, fruitful land. That's what they're supposed. That's that's what the text is communicating. The text is communicating that God is coming through on His promise. Yeah, the land is exceedingly. I mean, these are just wild things they found in yeah. their wanderings. This is not like they went to and raided a garden, no. right? This is just stuff they found in they the found land. How growing fruitful on, yeah, is it? growing. I mean, it's it's been. You know, some guy throws a throws a uh, some grapes out on the side of the road as he's as he's walking by on him with his donkey, and it grows up. It grows this this massive you know vines of grapes well and think about we're trying to connect these stories together so also go back to genesis and think what was the curse the curse was that the earth would not yield right mm -hmm. or it would only yield to adam with difficulty mm -hmm. but here's this land that god is bringing his people into and it yields fruit easily yeah. it just it just does it on its own yeah. it provides yeah so it's it's almost like, like a, the garden there you go it's almost like a garden Right, it's almost like the Garden of Eden again, and yes. so this is what the text is communicating to us. This land is and, and, filled with milk and, and honey. And it's if a he garden. keep and if he keeps telling us this, he told us in the beginning. Here he's told us again. They're going to go back in later on, and it's going to be that way. Mm -hmm. What's he trying to tell us? One of these days, what? One of these days, what? You're going to come back, yeah. And we're going to come back to a, a garden again. Because he tells us in Revelation, he said, I'm going to make a new land. Well, you have a new earth. And the Hebrew writer, think about this too. The Hebrew writer says it's in this land that we will have rest. Yeah. And he says, Joshua never gave him rest. Right. So we're the, the land is twofold. We we're, we're have rest in the land like God rested mm -hmm. right on the seventh day. So we'll have rest in the land. But we're also going to reap this. This The curse will be undone in it's, the land. It puts more more sense into hebrews when it talks about the sabbath rest mm -hmm. that the, some of the people weren't going to get to experience the sabbath rest because they were disobedient and if we're obedient and allow god to change the the heart, heart of stone to heart of flesh and dwell us with the spirit and then strive with everything we have to walk into and live in a godly holy life god says i will give you rest well think about it dan how easy was it to live a godly, holy life before you were in Christ? It was no, there was no way. It was impossible. It wasn't, it wasn't possible. 30 years. How? It's been 30 years since you converted. I was, Is that correct? Uh, no, it's been uh, 40. I was 20. I was 29. And I'm 72 now. So it was what? 44 years. Okay. I'm glad you did the math. I was told there would be years, no math. I think. So 40, 40, let's say 40 years. 40 years. 40 years later. How easy is it? compared to then to now walk oh it's night and day it's night and day different it's now it doesn't don't doesn't mean i'm not i don't still have to work at it because there's still things that i have to do sure but you know there i was coming from a lifestyle of of complete okay. utter sinfulness mm. okay and it took a while to transform and to and and to transform out of that and to and to walk out of that it took a it, it took a few years to to figure out but the desire the desire and then the ability to carry it out that happened after conversion didn't oh absolutely yeah i yeah. mean you maybe realized how bad things were over here yeah and what you needed to do mm -hmm. but once done once obedient now all of a sudden it's like night and day all of a sudden i have the desire well, i had i had things in my life now that i didn't have before i had thing i had things then that i didn't have before okay mm -hmm. i mean there was no way to live a faithful life when when everything around you was unfaithful mm. When it was hard to live a godly life when everything around you was ungodly. And, you know, what happened to me and what happened to my family is, is those things changed. It wasn't unhealthy where I was living. It wasn't ungodly where I was living anymore. Mm -hmm. Because now I had been, I had been translated from the world, the a world of darkness into a world of light. I didn't understand what that meant. It didn't matter if I understood it or not. God did it. 
And so now I'm, I'm coming to church and I'm in God's word and I've got leadership and godly people that are navigating this for me and helping me to navigate and, and helping me to figure things out that I couldn't figure out on my own. So it didn't really matter if I knew a lot because I had people in my life now that I would never have run with before. I never would have had anything, never would have interacted with before. Mm. And God put me in that place. And so it wasn't easy, but it was, it was, uh, it was doable where before it was not doable. It was not doable at all. So he pulled you out of the world, gave you a spirit, cleaned you up, mm -hmm. gave you a spirit, cut out your old stuff, mm -hmm. put in the new stuff that you would need, and then put you amidst a people. Mm hmm that you could mm -hmm. then obey, mm -hmm. which is exactly what the new, what the promise it's of exactly, Ezekiel it's, is. It's exactly what he's, what he's got ready for you guys. I mean, if, if that's, if you're living in that world and it's impossible for you to, to follow and to be Christ, to follow Christ, to, to separate yourself from a godless, you know, evil world. Well, maybe it's because you don't have God in your life. Maybe it's because you've never converted. Maybe it's because you've never obeyed the gospel. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you've never allowed God the chance to take you from this place, the place of darkness, and put you in the place of light. Well, Maybe that's what the problem is. I mean, I mean let's be frank, right? I, our understanding of belief in the 21st century is very shallow. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they talk about belief or faith, they're simply talking about a mental acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Mental acknowledgement of the facts of the case are irrelevant. Well, when it, we get into next week, when we get into the, into the, the report, and we'll get more into the report, we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 3. Because mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 3 gives you a very specific, very clear definition of God's idea of belief. Mm. Yeah, okay. He tells you exactly what he says belief is. Belief says, if you say you obey, if you say you believe and you don't obey, then you don't believe. Simple. There's a lot of people in the world today that run around saying they believe in Jesus. They believe in Jesus. They believe in Jesus. I believe in God. Oh, yes, I believe in all that stuff. But they don't want to obey. God says, no, you don't. Then you don't believe. That's right. I had somebody last night tell me, I said, do you believe if you, if you died right now, you go to heaven? I said, absolutely. I said, tell me why. Tell me why. Well, I believe in God. I said, and? What does that mean? Yeah. Well, I believe in him. I believe that he did this and this. I said, then where's the walk? Yeah. The devil believes that too. Yeah. The where, where's the walk? Yeah. Where, where's the walk that shows that belief? Where is it? You know, and I'm here to tell you that what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if... What if a mere agreement with God, a mental acknowledgement of the things God has said, what if that isn't sufficient? What if that's not enough? What if that maybe maybe in the 21st century we call that belief, maybe in the 21st century we call that faith, but what if it's not biblical faith? What if it's not what God has in mind? And if you're going to argue that mental acknowledgement is faith, that mere, or mere heartfelt, acceptance, or heartfelt acknowledgement, oh, heartfelt acknowledgement yeah. mental acknowledgement, just mere acknowledgement, telling God, looking up God and saying, I believe that you exist and I believe Jesus is your son. If you're going to argue that that is sufficient, then you've got a real problem with Hebrews chapter 11, James chapter 2. I mean, all throughout the scriptures, you have a real problem. You have a problem with Jesus when he says, pick up your cross and follow. Mm -hmm. When he says, this is the expectation, pick up your and cross and, and follow. That's where I took him last night. I took him and I said, I said, wait a minute. I said, didn't Jesus say we had to obey? There has to be an obedience. When, when has God become, and I, and I specifically said, God has to become more important than your daughter, your da granddaughter, your son, your grandsons. It has to become more important than that. And until that happens, that's there's right. no belief. That's right. There's no belief. Not God's idea of belief. And we'll look at it. Because we'll read this. I'm sure we'll, we have a, a little bit of time. We'll read some of this. Yeah, and, let's let's right. get into Let's see what happens. We will, yeah. Obviously, we're not going to do it. We're not going to finish it. No, no way. We're going to be right. here a while. Yeah. All right. They came back to Moses. So the spies are coming back, right? They've got the law. They've got everything. They God got the said. grapes. They got the grapes. The pomegranates. They've got the all dates, sorts of evidence. They got, they got right? all that. Okay, yeah. All right. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave... Moses, this, this account, we went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Oh, what do you know? God was telling us the truth. <laughs> Can you believe that? Can you believe that, God, you told us the truth, right? Like, I mean, you know, have, my kids say some things sometimes, 
and I'm and I'm burning with anger, and they have no idea why I told I would you. be upset. Right? Yeah, it's like it's like. Why you, you know, believe me? I told I, you. I, I look at my wife sometimes, and like Scott, my oldest, will start saying something, and I'm like, so apparently it wasn't enough when I said it. You had to go find out, and now it's like, oh, by the way, Dad was telling me the truth. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, son, it's upsetting. All right. So we went to the land. It's flowing with milk and honey. Here's the fruit. Verse 28. But the people who live there. Oh, oh, here it is. Uh Uh-oh. But the people who live there. It's like I I heard one time I said, when you say something and you end it with but, that means forget everything I just said, because now I'm going to really tell you what the truth is. Now Now I'm going to tell you the truth. Now that I've softened you up a little bit, let me tell you what I really think. (laughs) Well, this is what I really think. All right. Yeah. Uh, So, oh, it was great. It was great. And I like verse 28. What does it start with? But. 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 The people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. You know, I'm going to reiterate this. Egypt was the most powerful and advanced nation on the planet. Yep. Yep. Now, we have two different dates. There are two Uh different dates. Um that that are argued there's a late date and an early date either one egypt was an incredibly powerful nation yeah okay and god overturned them he overturned their gods he went to war on their behalf and freed them he kept these guys prisoner for 430 years it, they they couldn't there was thousands there wasn't just thousands there was there was a million of them they couldn't figure out a way to get out Guys, I watched a documentary the other day, and a lady, she I don't know, she'd killed somebody, and they put her in jail. She escaped. She figured out how to climb the barbed wire fence and get over concertina wire, you know? And these guys couldn't figure a way out of Egypt? No. They, no. Apparently not. No. I mean, it's... it's. But now this is too much. The people there, they're, they're, they're and they're very large. The cities are fortified. They're very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites <laughs> live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites. They live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of this land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. And that's really and that's really the essence of it, the problem. Now if you want to dig in deeper into the Nephilim, if you want to dig in deeper to the, the Anak and all of those things, there are places you can do that. We're not going to do that here. No. Um, I highly would re- I would highly when recommend when they walked in and saw the, the the bounty and the and the lushness of this garden, and they were distracted by what they should never have been distract, distracted by. Well, and that's absolutely right. That's we absolutely should not true. be distracted by Satan and his what well, seeming power. We should not be distracted by what seems like is going on in Hollywood and and all that place. We should not be distracted by that. We have a purpose. We have a mission. We're supposed to stay on on course, on point, because God said so. Well, and that's and that's Caleb. Caleb silenced the people. He says, yep. "We can go do this." Yeah. And he says that because God says it. Yep. God says we can do. And that's do what he's going to say. He said, "God told us we can do this." That's right. We can go do this. The we people, can... though, are more invested in themselves. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own Now, eyes. remember, these are leaders that the people are going to listen to. What was it that Eve saw in the garden? Did you see the connection? Yeah. And that's what's going on here. Yeah. It's the garden narrative all over again. Yeah. It's so sad. We constantly do this. Yeah. We see, we look doing through. It, we're doing it today. We're doing it in our country today. We look through things. We look at things from our own eyes. You know, rather than stopping and yeah. saying, how does God yeah. see this? Yeah. Faith is asking that question. Absolutely. And trusting in God. We're going to get into Hebrews 3 next week, I think, a little bit. Okay. I think it's I think it's pertinent. I think it, it, it gives a, a, a very concise portrayal of this very event mm-hmm. in Hebrews 3. So we're going to look at that next week. I'm excited, man. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the, uh, for the power of the word. Mm-hmm. We thank you, Father, for, for this story that tells us and teaches us so much. Father, we uh, we watch as, as this unfolds, and we watch the, the rebellion of these people and the and the hardness of their hearts and the selfishness of their lives. And we and we pray, Father, please help us not to be at like like and do these things and be like these people. 
Father, we have a, a great garden that is waiting ahead for us. You've promised us a, a land just like they had, flowing with milk and honey, a new land, a land that, that where we can have rest at. We long for that, Father, and we look forward to it. Help us to stay focused on you and stay focused on what's ahead. And Father, help us not to be distracted by the, by the negativity around us, by the evil that's around us, by the things that Satan is trying to use to undermine us and trying to take our focus away. Father, help us to stay focused. Help us to be strong as we look forward to you coming back and taking us home. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.